and proclaimed as part of a solution to dealing with the perennial conflict between farmers and herders in our country um, and, and the solution he prescribed has been that ranching is the way to go in 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 one of those um addresses before this house he actually gave indication that the, the some ranching project has actually started in the eastern region now i'd like to find out from you beyond the ranching if you're giving the law as the eastern regional minister what would you do to bring to an end the perennial conflict between farmers and herders in the eastern region thank you mr chairman the chairman indeed his excellency the president tasked his two ministers the minister for national security and the minister of a brick and I know in the last administration, Wawasi to be precise, in the cold north, cold north area, experienced this ranching and that had been developed. That aside, it has become a clear evidence to all of us that the nomadic practice it's not only a security matter, but a real existential subject that borders on our daily and our living. Mr. Speaker, I would say that, Mr. Chairman, I would say that we as a people must relook really at some of our laws and hear our Land Use and Spatial Act and how land use is properly apportioned for development and by so i mean we have come of age and rearing of cattle has become an economic activity and so interest in owning cattle has become a living dependent for most of our country's people and eastern region is not left out in this challenge we are facing this post the good work done by the operation cowlick team and realizing that today the nomadic headsmen value their lives equally as the cattle they drive around and so to a nomadic headsperson the life of one cattle is as expensive and as much equal to his own life and so they will do everything in their power in their ability to protect the cattle we have abundant public knowledge and the High Court in the Ashanti region ruled, Human Rights Court ruled, that there ought to be some enforcement and by which the security operatives had backing from and helped to bring some sanity into the system. But going forward, if offered the opportunity by the kindness of this committee through its recommendation. It is evidently clear and it's abundant that a lot can be made out of the cattle rearing. We can have dairy come out of it and we have to encourage stakeholders. But a lot of sensitization must go into this and it must go into it by ensuring that we engage appropriately the stakeholders who are the nomadic headsmen and 
some of our own country people who are also taking it as a business and are also confining them because the law asks that one must be permitted to rear animals but you must put them in a confinement. So if you do not have them in a confinement, then you are working against the law. And that is what we've been battling with them on. And so once we are able to enforce the law and get them to appreciate through sensitization and engaging them properly, I believe with the experience that I gained working on the committee and with the administrations of the time, we'll be able to put a lot of them into practice. I believe dialoguing them is also one area we haven't exploited and we need to engage them in that direction. It is clearly a matter which is not a security matter alone today. That's how I see it, a sociology matter as well. Chairman, let me welcome Seto Seta Champo, former Genoops uh, president, and our uh, days or my days at the student front as uh, NUX president. Just in your CV, come to page two. Parliament of Ghana, January 2013, January 2017. So, as at then tied into the next page, I want cut off dates for the Januarys. So, you just have to indulge, Chairman, and tell us that from January 6th up to January 7th, in that uh, respect. Then, committees of parliament, are you suggesting that? You have been on just these three committees throughout your stay in Parliament. And don't forget that your stay lapsed only in this 2021, as I see it in the same page 2, January 2021. So, see January is what you are referring to. The President's nominee for the Eastern uh, Region. What's the tourism potential in the Eastern Region? And what plans do you have for it? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm grateful to my brother, Haruna, with whom I'm so pleased to have known several years, like you really could. I had the opportunity to serve with him in the student front some years back. And he has not changed. And, and I'm happy that I still see him the way he is. Honorable, we want to save time. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I have been cautioned that I'm no more a chairman in this house. I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, I'll move on. Eastern region is very, very diverse, and we have a lot in tourism. I'll start from my own backyard and the identification of ancient and good old caves and sites. We have on the mountain of Ojanuma, and I, I'm, I'm proud to say that it is only in quote that we can paraglide in Ghana. It was cited and we are happy that so far it's marketed our community and marketed the Eastern region in Ghana in particular. When we come to when we come to hospitality industry, I am glad to say that one of your own, by virtue of his energy, is driving the hospitality industry very well in the coal area. And I'm happy to announce that one of the people who are making that huge stride for us to open up the Rock City on the rocks of the coal land is bringing and promoting local domestic tourism. I will move away from the coal area and go to the Okra area where we have the Valley Resort. And I'm happy to announce that most Ghanaian families have been calling me lately and asking me where to go in our region. 
and I'm able to point that hitherto, when I was a student, I only knew of Akusumbo Volta Hotel, where people could go and go on the ferry. But today, Senche is there. The Kuyapim Ridge is so beautifully carved out. Kufurudia has its own gifts, which is also being developed. However, as a person who will be in the region coordinating the administrative machinery of government, I would have to collaborate with the Ministry of Tourism and through the Ghana Tourist Authority, help by virtue of our mandate in supporting business development in the region, encourage the private sector to own more and drive the economy in the tourism sector for us. With such engagement, I'm sure we'll be able to bring the region's rich heritage to the fore. I believe these are some of the things that when given the note, we will push and allow our attention to be with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, I'm particular about the Eastern region for uh, good reason. You are my in-laws, and therefore I'm interested in the prosperity of the region. I see the Honorable Brian Achampong being surprised. He shouldn't be. Chairman, in the Eastern region, enormous potential for horticultural crops from Akuse through Somanya to Akusumbo. When you are driving, pineapple, watermelon, mango produce in abundance. No market for it, no value for it. You may want to advise even a 1D, 1F for the processing of it. And the agricultural opportunities in that part of the country, whether for rice production or for many of these crops, holds promise. When approved as minister, what will you do about this opportunity for better agricultural development to improve the livelihood of the men and women in the region? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed, the eastern region is known to be an agrarian zone of this country. In fact, the Afran Plains remains one of the bread baskets of this country. And it's an area we're looking to allow and encourage mechanized farming. Already some have taken the initiative and are cultivating large thousands of hectares of maize and are supplying traditional manufacturing in multinationals in this country. Some are the Nestle's of our times, the breweries of our times are enjoying good food supply from these farmers. In fact, in my own backyard in the pond, we ship close to two to five tons of banana daily to Accra. So is the Sujaman area. I would definitely have to sit with these industry and economic actors and help facilitate and ensure that they get ready market. I'm sure the major bane on them is access to the global market. We will be able to do so when we have sensitize ourselves and help ourselves with the standards that those markets operate with. But I will not be able to do all those by myself, but liaise with the appropriate sectoral heads, i.e. the Ministry of Trade, the Ministry of Greek, so that with their technical teams, we'll be able to put up proper education and enlightenment to these economic drivers. Chairman, so to the nominee, 1D1F, what do you have in mind to cite what, where, and for what? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So far, from the last administration and per the briefing I received, 
we initiated 23. 11 are up and running, and I know others are also going to run soon. And so most of these areas of interest in respect of particular traditional crops will definitely see our presence and drive for 1D1F because that is the only way we can help change the local economy and help our youth and our team in youth receive some employment. Chairman, uh, this morning the Honorable Ayarga made a significant observation for me when it comes to regional coordinating councils and regional ministers and you are supposed to be lead people for development in the decentralized uh, parts of the country. All the districts will be under you. Growing up as a young person, I enjoyed, Chairman, when, if I were struggling those days for trotter, or if I had money that day, taxi from the Achimota, at the time there was no overhead. But I enjoyed it. I still hear it. So home, so home. So home, so home. You know, they, <laughs> Soon, so on, um, you are struggling. Soon, so on, um, yes. Now, Chairman, my question. Many people now live in Insawam and Suhum and work in Accra. In the morning, they are struggling to get to Accra early on time to work. In the evening, they are struggling to return back to work. You have traveled abroad extensively. The rush hour concept, rush hour. What will you do to decongest the Suhum Sawum passengers on that uh, loop, working in collaboration with the Ministry of Transport? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Like, Mr. Chairman, the Honorable Member for Town Lisa, the ranking and the minority leader of the House, rightly said, I would be able to only collaborate with the Ministry of Transport, who will be the lead agency in respect of policy for the government. And I would also approach the Ministry of Roads and Highways to help expand the corridor so that it will encourage more commuters and more private participation in the sector so that commuters who may even go beyond to whom. I remember when I first came to Parliament, we had a cameraman here, he's late now, he used to live who sit for Mosino every morning to come to Parliament. And, and what was a street corridor, he was doing so. So I would, I, would, I would follow that counsel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I know we'll be more first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations on our set of Thank you. Immediate past chairman of Defense and Interior. In fact, that became your name, Defense and Interior. Yes. Um, I'm sure by now you're a bit familiar with Act 936, the Local Governors Act 2016. Now, under Part 8, decentralization at the regional level, it talks about the regional coordinating councils. Um, from your briefing, what are the challenges confronting the RCCs in effectively coordinating and directing the administrative machinery in the region? Thank you. I think one of the major challenges is on releases, which is kind of, uh, I might, if I may be allowed to say, Kanka, with all the the. Uh, with all the government administrative agencies. And so it is one matter when you come across, they will all rise up and tell you. However, once we are offered the opportunity and granted the approval, we will do our best to also follow the traditions. We will not be able to reinvent the wheel but ensure that we do the necessary follow-ups to make sure that subject does not derail or slow down government business. Besides 
one of the challenges that the traditional civil service and public services experience with the creation of new areas of administration that do not sit well with the traditional authorities. And so it always also creates some um, relationship problems for them. I'm sure these are matters that can be addressed with consultation. And I believe when offered the note, coming to the regional administration meeting, the chief director, the regional coordinating director with his team, um, the planning team, I'm sure we should be able to summon some of these challenges. But it's all to ensure that you respect one another. And I always say that in this exercise of ours, one principle underlying our democratic practice is mutual respect. Once everybody understands where you're coming from, you'll be able to make headway once they open you up. Thank you, sir. Yes, I was there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, honorable nominee. I want to find out from you, diamond mining, small-scale diamond mining in Ghana, unlike in other, uh, West, some other West African countries, has been rel relatively conflict-free. But its contribution to national development has been quite modest. So I'm wondering what you'll be able to do to reduce its impact on the environment and also try to support small-scale uh, miners of diamond in eastern region. We know that Akwitia holds the highest uh, deposits in this country. What will you be able to do to support small-scale mining to enhance development of this country? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed, I had the opportunity to witness on the sidelines the minister designate for natural resources, lands and forestry. And he was quite emphatic on the policies existing in respect of small-scale mining. I want us to all understand that indeed back in the region it is one of the concerns. However, the community mining concept that was introduced in the last administration is being deployed. And the policy, he's the lead policy person. I'll certainly be in collaboration and consultation with them and ensure that in our backyard, in not only Akwetia, now it is going beyond Akwetia. Um, no, those, the Minerals Commission will tell you, based on search, that Ghana is abound with a lot of mineral resources and it's in the entirety of the region you find mineral resources underneath everywhere it is up to leadership as when offered the opportunity to also lead in that direction and ensure that our environment is not battered and then all will be able we will be able to achieve this through effective sensitization and ensuring that stakeholders at least have something to do because these activities form a greater portion of our informal economic sector. And so you cannot just frown on them, but make sure you engage positively to ensure that we have what it takes. Like I said, one principle that I have come to associate myself with in this democratic practice is mutual respect. Sometimes when people believe you speak smoothly like I'm doing now, you can't speak the local dialect or you don't understand them, then they run away from you. But if you get them to appreciate that you know their needs and you would want to get their concerns addressed, they will listen to you. It's a very difficult subject. It's a very dicey subject. I'll not sit here and, and say it's an uneasy task. If we all understand what Vanguard has gone through, we have to sit up. But like I said, I'll definitely collaborate and consult with the sector policy leaders and ensure that our region also is not left out. And the voices of our region and the experience of our region is brought to the fore in shaping the policy and making all of us enjoy. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Thank you, Honorable Chairman, and congratulations. Thank you, Honorable Member for Abitifi Constituency. <laughs> Very well. Um, this is about uh, Kweu, uh, where you come from. So you know these facts. Um, we are about one third of the land size of the Eastern region. Yet, from Antuna Boma to Kawanda, um, about 70 percent of our population drink from streams and rivers. About 70% of the population in Kweu, from Antunamboma to Nkawanda, Traso area, drink from streams. Only less than a 30% of our roads are thawed. Headsman menace has been ravaging us for years. It's come down a bit. We want a bold statement from you that when giving the nod, your own backyard, you will support the political leaders, the traditional leaders, deal with the situation at hand. We want to see it as a core emergency that you are going to champion, take us out of some of the problems that I just listed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed, yes, the core area covers almost a third of the land size of the eastern region, citing the areas mentioned as a son of the land and so favored to be the designate nominee if the adage that charity begins at home is anything to go by I assure this house and this committee and by extension my people in Kogu but the good work that my brother uh, representing the people of Abitifi constituency started when he was a minister of state under the former administration by strengthening the cow leg operation in Quo. The next level of the exercise is what I echoed in an earlier answer. It is gone beyond a security engagement. We need to dialogue appropriately with the stakeholders. I say this with emphasis that I was born in Etibia and I live in Etibia Zango. I have lived with third, fourth generation Fulanese and Zambamas. But Fulanese live and practice more nomadic behavior. It is not only known to us. If you go into the Middle East, they call them the Bedouins. I don't know why it is so, but that's how they behave. And they'll sleep wherever their cattle is. And so I give every assurance that where he, with his stewardship under uh, the previous administration, pushed for progress in bringing peace and stability in the coal area, I will take off from there. Additionally, we enjoyed the 3K project, which has been a long, successive development by previous administrations. It is left with the distribution. We were pushing together whilst I was here. When offered this opportunity, and I became the substantive minister by the kind approval of this August House, we are going to join forces and lobby the sanitation sector so that we also enjoy portable drinking water in most of our areas because the Afran River is a large pool of food for us and we will feed from it. And I there assure this house that that is one of the subjects which is going to be high on my desk when given the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee, I've gone through your CV, uh, quite impressive background. You've done very well for yourself. Um, to the House, the nominee has shown strength of character over the year that I've known him. And um, I have no question but to wish you well if you get a nod and we work together to bring peace, prosperity to the Eastern region 
and Kwewe in particular. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the kind words. You took the one before Giselle, then I'll, I'll close it. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Honorable nominee, congratulations once more. Uh, it was Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it was reported uh, on the 16th January 2020 that the Eastern Region tops infraction on utilization of Assembly's Common Fund and other statutory funds. Um, so what measures will you put in place to address this worrying challenge in the region when giving the nod? Mr. Chairman, I wish to seek the questioner, the honorable member for Medina, to state the specific interest. He said it earlier, I didn't get it clearly in my ears, I'm sorry. So I said it was reported uh, the source is Ghana News, and it's also being reported on joyonline.com uh, that Eastern Region tops infractions on utilization of Assembly's Common Fund and other statutory funds. So my question is that being the, supervisory, the supervising uh, minister of the region, what measures would you put in place to ensure that District Assembly Common Funds and other statutory funds are utilized uh, within the mandate uh, for which they are given yeah thank you very much mr chairman mr chairman when given the opportunity i will certainly have the mandate to supervise the various district assemblies together with the administrative machinery and like i said earlier in one of my answers there's no reinventing the wheel. The same people are the ones who are going to be there, but you only have to motivate and ensure that the workmen that you operate with also work within the confines of the rules as set out. And so we are going to ensure strict uh, respect for our personnel and their conditions of service and motivate them when necessary so that the same drive which got us the best region in utilization of these resources will be maintained. Secondly, um, again, on the 22nd December 2020, myjoonline.com reported uh, a robbery incident in Asasewa, where eight sustained gunshots. Um, and there have been other worrying reports of robbery within your region. As the chairman of the Regional Security Council, what measures are you going to put in place to ensure that Eastern Region will be safe for all citizens of Ghana dwelling in Eastern Region? Thank you very much. I certainly believe that when given the opportunity, we will work together as a regional security committee together with all the state apparatus available those on the intelligence front those on the operations front we are going to put our heads together to see how we rim up and re-strategize to help bring peace and stability to bring back confidence to our citizenry so that they can go about their businesses as free as everybody expects them to go through. You can only discuss detailed security plans within the confines of the walls of a security meeting. However, I give the assurance that we will definitely cooperate appropriately with the relevant institutions. The Asian region has got a elaborate road network, so sometimes it makes patrols, operational patrols, a challenge for the operatives. We will find ways and means of approaching the heads of governments who have the capacity to support us in that direction. And I'm, I assure the House that we will come together and help the region enjoy her peace and her stability. And finally, um, in 2021, on, on 12th of January, it was reported by GNA that Eastern Region 
records four to five road accident deaths uh, within 2020. Um, and you mentioned road networks. Even if you are driving from Madina side all the way to Kofoidia, you see that the road is very narrow and it makes it, I mean, it's easier, contributes to head-on collisions from time to time. What would you do to check road accidents? And would you consider uh, dualizing most of these roads as one of the options? Thank you very much. When offered opportunity, certainly I would collaborate with the Minister for Roads and Highways in really looking at the alignment of our road networks in the region. Like I said, we have elaborate road network in the region. Some of them are up to scratch in respect of the road structure. It's well sealed, it's very motorable, access is smooth. In some areas we don't have it like that. We will look at them as well. And again, we would have to find ways and means of engaging the stakeholders, the transport owners, the transport unions, and periodically offer ourselves some capacity assistance. It, it, is, it is useful that periodically we do some in-service building and help them to understand and appreciate. Some drivers must be defensive on the road and must be cautious. In areas where you have bends as you approach, you know, the acceleration must go down. These are basic self-help knowledge we can all enjoy once we understand ourselves and work well. And these are some of the approaches we will bring to the fore. We cannot do it, but make sure we work with administrative machinery and get the right technical people to be in place to assist these economic actors because they must win some revenue to survive and they would also be on the road. But it is incumbent upon us in leadership to provide such leadership for them. Thank you. Yes, John. Congratulations, Honorable Nominee. Thank you. One region that has been impacted heavily by Galamse is the Eastern region, Galamse. I'm saying one region that has been heavily impacted by Galamse is Eastern region. What steps will you take to reduce the Galamse activities in the region? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, like I said earlier, I listened attentively to the minister designate responsible for natural resources and lands and forestry on enforcement. I'm sure one of the primary reasons is enforcement. Besides that, I have been stating here that indeed stakeholder consultation is crucial and necessary because our population keeps increasing and growing. You cannot allow them to do nothing. They would have to find themselves something to do. So we will go by the policies of the sector and ensure that the community mining scheme is deployed and encouraged to offer job opportunity for our team in youth. They again make them responsible for reclaiming the lands so that our environment is kept clean and good. Thank you. The, the one um, research that lately people are concerned about the youth of Ghana is online fraud and gambling. What will you do to tackle the increasing rate of youth engagement in online fraud and gambling in the Eastern region? It's generally Ghana, but particularly also in the Eastern region. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman, this will not be surprising because the um, Eastern region and our regional capital, Kofuridia, happens to be the closest regional capital to the national capital, Accra. And so overflows of any sophistication in respect of crime will certainly find its roots into the Eastern region. It's an issue that is already being considered in respect of safety, I mean public safety. And so we would work with the appropriate agencies in the public safety sector to help bring it down. We would have to start a different approach of um, targeting those within our second cycle institutions who are becoming tech savvy and who would go through into tertiary level to become more experienced in the uses of devices. But these, those, are the pre, those are the targets 
who people who want to do things that are not lawful may want to use in, in, in perpetuating such crimes. And so we need to make sure that in our leadership we offer them alternatives. Hence the various government initiatives that are being put forward in, in, in the various sectors will encourage and bring it to fore so that people get to know of them and generate interest in them and participate in them to bring it down. But besides that, fighting it clearly as a crime, we will consult with the right and appropriate officers that has the know-how to get it done to support us to help bring it to an end. Yes, I'm not with you there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominee. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. We go back to, from our road track days. When you had hair, <laughs> now you're bald. <laughs> um, if I may ask, what do you think you'll be able to do about developments in the Ebri area? I'm asking that because you recall that there was a while, some time ago, there were some boulders that had peeled off the edge of the as you go up the Ebri Mountains, and so they had to put a safety net over there, such that um, it was protecting them from falling onto the road. But you also realize that the development in that enclave, some of them are very close to the edge, and the ground cover with time is getting removed, and that can cause a, an environmental problem at one point or the other. What do you think you'll be able to do as regional minister to take care of that enclave? I'm saying this because you compare a place like coming from Cape Coast, sorry, on the Cape Coast Road, somewhere near Wager. It used to be a very green area. There was a hillside. It used to be very green. With time, it has eroded. People have built along it and so on and so forth. And it is an area prone for landslides, possibly and so on and so forth. What do you think you will to do as regional minister to help in that environmental, to curb any environmental um, challenges? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed, this comes to education. And so, I, uh, observing from the sidelines, I, I have heard the Honorable Member for Boko Central ask on questions on um, land use and spatial planning. And this is an area that we have to be a bit proactive and front load education. It is time that we got uh, personnel within uh, districts, municipals, and metropolitans to approach as a way of mobilizing revenue, also engage with developers by educating them Besides the technical committee's role of approving or building plans for development, we also would have to get developers educated on the various scientific dangers that leads to disaster in these areas. I'm sure when we get developers to understand that the areas they may be investing their funds is a disaster prone area every person spending money and knowing that the money may not go into the right usage and the right benefits derived out of it may think twice i'm sure when some of these actions are effected and taken it will help us transform and get the people to appreciate the need not to get so close to such areas i really uh, I understand that uh, 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 area of our development and I am sure falling on the necessary technical teams in the regional coordinating council we will devise schemes to engage developers so that we can all enjoy some safety and keep the environment safe for ourselves too thank you my last question <laughs> um, as East Regional Minister, my constituency also borders on one of yours, Upper West Akim. So 
whatever security interventions you will make on that side, I believe that it will spill over for the safety of my constituents as well. But finally, you have the chance, you have the drive, you are young, you have the chance to transform your region in four years. What would be your tangible deliverables? Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think we can only do much with private participation. And there are enormous potential in the region. With the right chemistry and approach, good action plans, one will be able to transform the region with immense private participation that will transform the economy of the region. We can only do that with details. And when offered opportunity, these are some of the thoughts that we have on our books that we believe will help bring some newness. Very soon, and very, very soon, I'm sure, we will overtake the domestic tourism of your region into eastern region. That is our strategy. We are not going to make busy like you know me. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. We, we, we won't make noise, but we will drive and ensure that uh, we have good actors. And like I said, uh, if you come into the coral reef, we have Rock City, you have the valley. We, there are lots of development. Private participation is driving the economy and bringing hope. This aggression is what we are hoping to tap into, to leverage on and make our region get closer to the domestic tourism you hold in the central region. Thank you. I'm grateful. Over there to you. Most grateful, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I congratulate the nominee, a very good friend of mine, who I have no doubt will uh, do a good job if given the nod. I have only one question for him, which uh, relates to the numerous boundary disputes between Eastern Region, Greater Accra, and Eastern Region, Volta Region. And in this case, I must declare my interest that uh, there's a matter that my constituency is uh, confronted with. And I must commend the Akwamu Paramount Chief, Odeneho uh, Kwafu Akoto, the third, and the Dofo Chief in my constituency, Togbi Abola and Co. They have tried at that level uh, to be very uh, conciliatory and to manage the youth and developers who are, uh, as it were, uh, left uh, to grapple with exactly where the boundaries are, what is the delineation, whether Joapon, Accra, Akra, Ogoli, where it ends in my constituency and where Eastern Region begins. It's a major issue, and I noticed from page 104 of your handing over notes, or your predecessors handing over notes, sorry, that uh, he indicates that a technical committee was constituted by REXEC to ensure the proper demarcation of the boundaries of the region. That's all he says. He doesn't provide any updates, no details. I assume that probably the technical committee is still working. I want to find out if you have received any briefing about the work of this technical committee and what is your own uh, attitude and what will be your, your policy imperatives about these boundary matters. Because as former chair of the Defense and Interior Committee, you know that this is a major uh, national security threat if it is not uh, aggressively uh, resolved. So boundary disputes, what will you do about it, particularly Eastern and Volta region, in my beloved North Town and the good people of uh, Eso Jaman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, indeed, we have 11 paramounts in the Eastern region, and boundaries is a major concern to us. And we respect the custodians of our lands, our chiefs, and we would dialogue deeper in the matter before which we are being asked to discuss. Yes, I was offered a brief. The task force is in place, but we would want to go a step further by consulting with the Boundary Commission, which is now in place on their policy 
going forward. We will need some expertise from them as well as we dialogue between our chiefs. We cannot run away, and I must continue to say this. I have people from the constituency of the Honorable Lokujetu who live in my constituency, and they are fourth, fifth generation people who will not go back to their constituency because the only item that separates us, the boundary, is the front river that separates us. And so we are the same people, but we would live in a democracy under the rule of law. And so where matters haven't gotten to the law courts, we would use what I call mutual respect negotiations and get the historical facts and bring the unity, stability, and progressive image of our country to the fore so that we can dialogue and get understanding. I know it's a major problem. Recently, between the Greater Accra and the Eastern Region, we suffered some in Akusi, where some towns and some uh, electoral areas had to go back from the Greater Accra to the Eastern Region. I'm sure these are experiences that we are going to build on and engage with our traditional leadership in the region to bring some sound settlement in these disputes. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so now I yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. It seems to me that we have in this house or the government of uh, President Nana Kufadu and other previous governments have passed a vote of no confidence, a vote of no confidence in regional governments. Uh, this is manifest in the establishment of uh, zonal development authorities. Because I see that these are clearly the functions of regional governments that have been farmed out and given to these um, development authorities. What will you do to improve confidence in regional governments? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think it is a policy drive and His Excellency the President in his vision to help speed and accelerate development in the country decided to create the development authorities to supplement the traditional established public offices of our system. Like, I don't know whether my mutual respect concept is something that we should all thrive on. You can never do a 1D1F in any district without consultation with the established local government administration. You definitely have to communicate with them. And so we're going to encourage more respect of our institutions and engage appropriately. And I believe when that happens, we will all enjoy some peace. And that perception that regional governments are not enjoying the full support of central government will be not thought of at all, but will be part of matters that are dropped in the back burner. I am of the opinion that those creations, like I said earlier, was to help accelerate development of the vision of His Excellency the President. So, what has been your assessment? What, what has been the spectacular achievements of these development authorities, different from the work that the various regional coordinating councils have done over the years? What has been so spectacular about them, apart from, in my opinion, duplication and 
and fragmentation of resources, resources that could have gone into beefing up the capacity of regional coordinating council to do the same work, is being fragmented. I think in the history of this economy of ours, we have come a long way and we must all admit that our population and the handover from one generation to the other has not been so smooth. So we've always had a backlog of personnel. I'm sure one creative and innovative way was this creation of the development authorities. It also offered opportunity for some who were skilled, trained, but had no placement to enjoy some placement. And at the same time, if they were not that much experienced in skill, they got opportunity to interface with the established systems. And that relationship offered some confidence. And I know this has helped this economy. One, in a sense of security, because an insecure youth would fall and find themselves doing anything. But by virtue of these creations, it has helped us bond together and offered hope for the economy and the economic actors. By and large, I believe they are units that we should encourage ourselves to deepen its existence and improve upon over a review so that we will see an accelerated growth. We tell ourselves that we are a lower middle income country. It comes with certain definitions. You are able to achieve those definitions with an accelerated drive. And I'm sure one of the ingredients to help us achieve that was, by, was the creation of these development authorities. And I believe with a positive attitude towards it, we will get ourselves to where we want to be. Thank you. So do we expect to see you craft out a regional economic development strategy and every year give us an indication of what you will do to achieve uh, your regional develop economic development strategy? You see, I think that regions are economies and just the way that at the national level we plan the economic development of the country. I think that regional coordinating councils must also plan the economic development of the region and define the strategy for achieving that and figure out financing mechanisms for achieving that. Do we see you, you know, using that model in terms of your tenure as a regional minister? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we are primarily in office to be enablers to facilitate for the business community to also express their endowed intentions. And so it is one cardinal subject we will give all our energies to, to grant confidence to the business community that we are really hoping to engage them. We are going to employ the experience available to us in, in engaging all the stakeholders. In our region, we have all the giant players of our economy dwelling in our region. They all have footing in our region. So we will sit with them and also offer them the needed assistance that they require to help facilitate their business. Because the more they grow, the better they will be able to also allow for the threat of job lessness so that unemployment will go down because they will expand once you offer them the needed assistance they will expand and you also grow and this is one of the things we look into bringing in our leadership thank you very much Mr. Chairman. we have a strategic asset in your region that we have a strategic asset in your region the the dam um environmental threats to its um, viability and sustainability. What would you do uh, from an environmental point of view to continue to protect the, the integrity of the dam? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the dam 
is a restricted zone and there are existing regulations governing that area. We are going to stay with strict enforcement of those regulations so that people do not encroach because it is a national asset. Though it is within our region, it is a national asset and we must protect it for the interests of the country. So we we'll do say. Yes, leadership. Thank you, Chair. My good friend, Honorable Nomini, congrats. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let me take you to our front plains. I'm sure you're familiar with that zone. Um, it's supposed to be the food basket of the region and largely the country, the entire country. Um, do you have specific plans that will enable us, enhance this capacity of the area and also largely support farmers to be able to do what they have to do? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, yes, indeed. In an earlier question, I talked about uh, challenges in our land use and spatial planning in the country. Uh, lands are mostly school lands and state lands. And the front plains is one such area which is owned by multi traditional authorities. Uh, I'm a quote, so I'm a bit more familiar with ownership of lands in the front plains. However, as I've said early in, 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 in an earlier answer, whatever it takes to meet with our kings, our chiefs, for them to appreciate the importance in helping to transform the local economies of our people, will do the maximum best to ensure that we will facilitate any investor, will facilitate for any investor who is interested. Like I said in my earlier answer, it is an area we are focusing on mechanized farming. Mechanized farming will help promote our agriculture, transform our agriculture, and bring new technology, and bring new understanding for our people. We'll collaborate with the necessary ministries to ensure that we get the needed assistance, both technical and know-how, and government support in respect of inputs. Some government will be in to assist. We will definitely do our best in leadership to facilitate state, because that is the only way we can change an economy such as ours, the Ghanaian economy, which is primarily an agricultural economy, agrarian economy. So, Afran Plains is a major subject. I'll be collaborating with the Ministry of Agri, not only the Ministry of Agri, the Ministry of Foods and Highways for access roads to enable investors have a useful infrastructure in respect of the corridors to also assess farmlands that are available, a lot of arable land available in those areas. At the same time, there's investment in the area of tourism. Uh, uh, other people are looking to even do fish farming in that area, and, and we will encourage all these investors. It is about time that we collaborate very well to drive that area of our country to bring the needed potential out for everybody to know. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable, you, you've mentioned um, the interface with the Minister of Agri, which I think is a good point to make, and clearly you understand the variables at play. Um, one area which, in my view, has left untapped is irrigation. I recognize that you mentioned it in passing, but I I feel that going forward, over the years, the place has been left unattended when it comes to irrigation. Government cannot do it by itself, all by itself. Do you consider it relevant getting a very good investor, specific to the area of irrigation, mainly because of the potential, the abundance of water? available. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I couldn't go further to use any language than ably used by 
the honorable member for Nsangom, who happens to be the majority chief whip, I will do so. And I assure you, I'll come to you for ideas because I know of what you're doing in your backyard. I know by your leadership, Aztec is back on, on and, and very soon you'll be producing some beautiful juices for us. I, I, used, to, I used to drink Aztec and, and, and went away. And so I, I know I am done. I'll follow up the advice he gave me. I'll not go anywhere. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Honorable Nomini, you are clearly spot on. Um, on industrially, industrialization drive uh, in the eastern region. We have all the advantages, proximity-wise, we are close to Accra and Tema and all that. Business-wise, it makes a lot of sense. And you clearly intimated what the government has done relative to the revival of Aztec, which is, a, which is a big news. Now, we have a defunct factory called Canary. Um, do you consider that also as a priority, borrowing from the lessons on what or the model that was adopted in reviving Aztec to replicate in reviving uh, Canary as well, all towards the industrialization drive of the government? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, every potential um, business in the region is a priority. However, we have to go through the rules. I think there have been some transitionings in respect of the canary, and we would have to follow through the existing legal regimes. And when we have settled all interest, I'm sure it is a major potential recruiting center for our team and youth that are coming up in the region, and I'll definitely pursue that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chair, this, this will be my last. I'll make two questions up here in one. Uh, the clinker deposit in Eastern Region. I know a couple of times there have been attempts to exploit it. Individuals have taken some advantage. I want to ask you, what is your view on the exploitation of the clinker deposit in Eastern Region and also reflecting on the welfare of the Krobu block uh, as part of the region. Then the Densu River, we all know the importance of it, it's the areas it flows through, it serves as a source of raw water to Ghana Water Company. What are your plans towards these uh, issues I've raised? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, first and foremost is of the environmental concerns in these two developments. The residents along the banks of the Densu River, if I may take that first, will definitely be encouraged to respect the natural existence because Densu predates everybody and Densu is serving greater people in this country in respect of portable water. And so whatever I will be able to do in respect of supplying information to the sector ministry which has the lead authority in policy with respect to ensure that that natural resource is well catered and protected for and on behalf of the country, I will do so as a representative of the president in the region. Besides that, the clean car development is a major investment drive. However, we need to consider all the environmental issues in this day and age. And as much as we would want to live and enjoy life, we must enjoy life within the confines of a healthy environment. And so it is something we will definitely take initiatives on, but we will be guided by all the protocols to ensure that a good work is effected. We cannot allow that resource to sit all this while, but it will only be done in collaboration with the sectors that have the mandate to allow for mining, the sectors that have the mandate to allow for even some FDIs which will require some guarantees we would need to collaborate and consult with all these sectors before we are able to take such a bold initiative. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Very well. 
We thank you for attending upon the house to answer questions. Yeah, you will hear from us, but for now you are discharged. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and acknowledge my immediate successor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman discharged me. But you didn't tell me, I wouldn't have spoken. Ten minutes break, then we'll take the last moment.